Okay, welcome to our class number two and four, and or. The candidates, we have uh, 24 games played since the last class, six rounds, four games per round. And of the 24 games, eight were decisive and 16 draws. And I read on the internet, so you know it's true, that before the last round, so the last round, I don't know, that half of the games that were decisive in the tournament were Kramnik's. Okay, so I don't think that's the case now, but maybe. Um, Kramnik had a draw last round and there were two decisive games, so it's no longer true. Um, but yeah, so, um, and again, I have my own opinion on that. I think um, you have to win the tournament. So I agree with trying to win every game. Gotta win. If you win, potentially you become the world champion or at least get that money for the world championship. If you don't win, then you know, who cares? So, uh, okay, let's uh, go back. As you all know, hey, keep it down over there. Yeah, you, quiet. As you all know, uh, there's a two-way tie for first right now, Karyakin and Kramnik. Karyakin and Kramnik. Karyakin and Karawana, oh, they have the same name. And there's a three-way tie half a point behind Ding, Mamajarov, and Grishuk. So any of those five people can win the tournament. Um, I'm guessing Karyakin at this point. Okay, so we're going to look at every game, but the ones that were quick draws, we're not going to look at too much. This game had a funny moment in it. And um, uh, again, if this was played um, seven days ago, so I think this was, this was actually, we had the class and we talked about this already last week, because this is where after queen d6 attacking the pawn, you have to decide, are you going to defend with the queen or the king? And if you defend with the king, the game goes on, and Grishik defended with the queen. And now after queen a3, how do you defend this pawn? So the game ended in a repetition. And if white wants to play for a win, then white has to play king f2 here, which I guess Grishik was in the mood to do. I mean, if you asked me before the tournament who were the two big, biggest fighting players, probably these two, and then there's a draw. So, okay, and we saw that last week, actually. Okay, so actually these games we already looked at. Um, although I think the 74 move game was still going on during the class, the Kramnik Dingler in game. Oh yeah, this is the game where all the memes started, all the nonsense. So as you know, they've been making fun of Kramnik for a week on the internet. The reason is Kramnik always says he's winning. I'm winning, every position I'm winning. And this was the key game in his insanity. So the computer always said Ding was equal or better. And Kramnik said he was winning the whole game. And Ding's like, well, I don't agree. And he said, this is an easy win. This is a technical win. This is no problem. I think the computer said he was worse. But anyway, this is Kramnik with the queen down saying he's winning and it's no problem at all. And he was, couldn't believe he didn't win. He was shocked. Okay, the game ended in a draw. The funniest part of the game, and this actually reminded me of a game that I played, and Matt Larson told me about it. This is actually pretty funny. So... Uh, yeah, this is very this is very funny. Okay, in this position, the players repeated rook check, rook here, then he went back, and then rook check, and he went back, and now it can be a draw by repeating. And Kramnik didn't repeat and played here, going into a pawn down endgame, which was this. So Kramnik would rather have white here than repeat and draw. Now that's funny. So Matt Larson, I did something similar when I was playing a 2200 player. I went into a pawn down queen and instead of drawing. Now I'm playing a 2200, but he's playing Dingler in, so yeah. So that was the funniest thing Kramnik did in the game was, was play for the win with queen and two against queen and one with the one. And then okay, they just drew because it's perpetual. But, but I mean, that was weird that he didn't just draw by repetition. He went to a pawn down, so that was sort of funny. But yeah, he claimed he was winning the whole game and he doesn't understand how he didn't win. So how did I win? Then they made fun of him on the internet, and when they make fun of him on the internet, they do a good job. There's, you know, Black's winning, he says, but I'm white, that's my move, I move one. Now after E4, E5 wins, yeah. And then there's a, there's a, 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 a cartoon on the internet where Kramnik's in a coffee shop, like, drinking coffee, and it's on fire. Every, he's the only one there, it's just on fire. He's probably gonna die. And he, he says, I'm winning. That's, so Kramnik's always winning, okay. So he drew that game when we were, yeah. Okay, uh, 
This game was funny because, once again, this was the day after the last class that we had. This was on a Monday. Um, this, this game was just a draw, and Kramnik decided to lose. He's like, I don't want to draw, so he lost. And people left the game. Now, I wasn't watching the game. I was busy with whatever I was doing. I was teaching a class. And then this game never ended. And people that were watching the candidates, they thought the game just ended in a draw. And I'm like, this game is still going on, and Kramnik's going to lose. And they're like, what? This game took like seven hours. And they got to this really drawn ending, and like nothing was happening. White's a pawn up, and black has two bishops. And they got a really drawn position. I guess this position was like super drawn. Yeah. Was it this position? There's some position that was a dead draw and Kramnik decided to lose. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. Yeah, this, was, this is the position in question. So his bishops attacked, right? And this pawn's attacked a lot. Like, a lot. Okay, so after bishop d7, you attack the rook, attack the pawn, and attack this pawn three times. And the computer just says it's a draw. Like, everything's just a draw. And Kramnik played a very strange move, bishop h1. What? And actually, that reminds me of a move Fisher played that they made fun of, too. But Fisher drew that game. Uh, Fisher played bishop to a1 in a similar kind of position. And now, white has a big advantage. And then, I actually saw a Kramnik interview about this. This is very funny. In the interview, Kramnik said he saw this, attacking his rook, this, attacking the bishop on b2, this move, ignoring the bishop on b2 because we're going to queen. And Kramnik saw this and thought, rook b3 check. And obviously, if the king goes backwards then Rook takes bishop as check. And Grishuk just played here. If you take the bishop, and I move my king, your Rook's attacked, and I'm doing all this stuff. So just winning for white. And I think he dismissed bishop c3. In the inter interview, he said, I thought if you this, I should go check. And like that was the end of his analysis. And after here, he just lost. So he lost. Yeah, and here he didn't play well either. Um, this ending, he played very strange. Uh, what did he, he did something really weird. Yeah, he just lost all his pawns. Yeah. Okay, and this is losing, and he lost. Okay, and he resigned here. Yeah. Um, White just does this and queens this pawn. And probably announces mate here, because the pawns are on the seventh. So, yeah. Um, yeah, bishop h1 is a very strange move. But he's always playing for a win. So also playing for a loss. Now it's funny. As you know, in the 19... I want to say 1988, but I could be a year off. I think I'm not a year off. In 1988, the World Junior Championship was a tie for first between Vasily Ivanchuk and Joao Latier. And the tie break was most wins. And it was a 13-round tournament. Latier had nine wins and four losses. Okay, and Ivanchuk had uh, five wins and nine draws, so they got the same score, and Lottie won because he had more wins. And as a, a friend of mine pointed out to me, it's also most losses. That's also the tie break. So you have most wins, you have the most losses. If you have the same score, and I think that's the tie break here. It's like most wins and most losses. But anyway, uh, Kramnik. Uh, playing for a win when it's not justifiable and you lose. And actually, there's something very funny. Uh, in one of the tournaments, I think it was in Russia, I think it was a tall memorial, but I could be wrong. There was a very strong Super GM tournament. And they do this sometimes now. Uh, and you probably don't know this. There's a drawing of lots. And the drawing of lots, that determines what pairing number you have which determines who you get white and black against. And so, in a lot of Super GM tournaments, you can get more whites than blacks and vice versa. You seem fascinated by the position. No, no, I, okay. I'm listening. Right. And uh, 
Of course, if it's a nine round tournament, you'd want five whites and four blacks. Well, in one of the tournaments in question, the first tie break was most blacks. So if you tied and you had five blacks and they had four blacks, you win. And Kramnik wanted to win on tie breaks. He chose a number where he would get more blacks than he came in last. So uh, he was trying to win on tie breaks if he tied for first. That's pretty funny. So Kramnik's always looking for that edge, but he keeps losing. So now what's funny is Kramnik had two and a half out of three in this tournament. And then he just started losing. Then he got one out of his next six. So, so that was a game he lost that confused people. Uh, Mama Drav Karyakin was very boring. Ding versus Aronian. This was a very exciting game where Ding had a big advantage and he messed it up. Um, very exciting game, though. Yeah. Yeah, now he plays knight takes d2, bishop takes. The material's equal. A white's up a pawn. So here the computer says white's up a pawn. And Ding has good winning chances, but he couldn't win up a pawn. And as you know, later in the tournament, Ding was plus 17 and drew that game. Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, this is one of the games where Ding has a big advantage and didn't win. Now white can't castle because he played rook g1, but black also can't castle. Then white's up a pawn. Okay, but he couldn't win. Okay, and this happened to Ding throughout. Okay, so Karawana was Karawana squeezing and squeezing and squeezing and couldn't win. However, it reminded everybody of a famous endgame, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Lasker versus Lasker. Okay, very similar to Kramer versus Kramer. Okay, Lasker versus Lasker is Emmanuel versus Edward. And uh, at some point, they got to a rook and pawn versus a knight. And the guy who had the rook and the pawn, which was Edward Lasker, his king was in Cucamonga somewhere, and Emmanuel Lasker, his king and knight, were right there. So Lasker's trying to take the pawn, the, the, the good Lasker, then he would have king and knight against king and rook, and that's a draw. And the rook was defending the pawn, he was blocking the rook, and eventually it was a draw. And they did the same thing in this game. And people were talking about how it had happened before. So they played forever, and they got, let's see when it started. Yeah. So they got this position... And black played rook to d3, so you can't take the pawn because you lose your knight. And in fact, if it was black to move, black would go here, if you see what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So white played here, so you can't do that. Because I take it. So actually, white can't take the pawn, and black can't go here. So you just sort of chill. Okay? And so the way for black to win is to, is to do this. Okay, then black wins, which takes a while. Now, if black goes the other way, which doesn't work, okay, well, I'm going to push this pawn. And then you're going to move your rook and take it, and then I take this pawn. It's a draw. Okay, so, so, what, so Fabiano's like, you're not going to move that pawn. He goes there. Then he blocks the pawn. And what he wants to do takes a thousand moves. He, he wants to... Um, Play king here, king here, knight here, knight here, knight takes. And that's what he does, and that draws. And that's what he'll do if black moves his king over here and takes the pawn. So black doesn't move over and take the pawn, then white can't do that, but then black can't do anything. So it's very strange. It's a strange position. But if black doesn't take this pawn, he can't, you know. But that's the winning idea for black is to move his king around. So he did. And now he played the move b4, which is a funny move. So the idea is, when I do this and this and take your pawn, I don't want you defending your pawn. I want your king over here, like where Emmanuel, where Edward Lasker's king was. So he's like, hey, go take my b pawn so I can do that. Go take my b pawn. Now your king's, now I can do this and this and this. And you can't play king f4 winning, which would win here because they pinned the knight. So by getting Black's king as far away as possible, he could take that pawn. And Caruana's like, no, I'm, I'm not going to move my king over there. So now, if we play the same way, and Black wins, because Black's king is one move closer. Okay. So Wesley played a really funny move here, played b5. And he said, well, 
Take with your rook, I'm going to take the pawn. Take with your king, I'm going to do that thing I just showed you. And if you don't take my pawn, I'll keep pushing it. That's a really good distraction. He's like, move over there so I can take that pawn. Okay, well, obviously if you take, then I'm going to take your pawn. So, okay. So Fabi played a little of both. He played king d5, which is funny. He's keeping his king in both directions. He keeps pushing it. And then he takes the pawn. Yay! And then he half-heartedly tried to win. Very half-heartedly. Then he took the knight. And it's funny, when I was a little kid, maybe I was a B player. So this is 40 years ago. Uh, there was a master at the chess club. We had a chess club in Ann Arbor that had a lot of strong players. And he was explaining to everybody, when you have a knight against a rook, you're always drawing. Even the worst positions. He's like, look at this position. King's on the back rank, knight's next to it, you're getting crushed, still a draw. Yeah, now rook against bishop is also always a draw if your king gets to the correct corner. But rook against knight, he was showing really bad positions that looked lost, but they weren't. Now you can get lost positions, but there's not too many. And here, with the pieces of the second rank, it's an easy draw, because first rank is tougher, but still a draw usually. So he just gave up. He gave up pretty quickly. Now that's funny because... I don't want to cast any aspersions, but I have my lawyer here, so I won't get in trouble for this, I guess. Back in the day, even before you were born, but before I was born, some people claimed that when people from the same country played each other, some suspicious activities. Man, that don't happen in America. When, when Wesley and Fabi and Naka play, there ain't no quick draws, there ain't no looking to help that guy. Man, ain't no that. That's like, you know, especially with Naka. He's like, if I could beat those guys, and they wouldn't play, but that would be even better. Of course, yeah, I can imagine the last round, Naka's black against Fabi, and Fabi needs a draw to play for world championship. And Naka's going to never give him a draw, ever. Right? Ever. Now, Wesley might, just because, like, you know, I don't want to play anymore. But, like, Wesley's not doing well this tournament. Wesley just wants to go home. Right? He's like, I'm going to come in sixth or seventh or eighth, so whatever. But... Yeah, those players aren't like, oh, he's my countryman. They, they ain't happening here. So this game took six hours, and they got to king versus king. Right? They're not kidding around here. And Fabi was almost winning for most of the game. Almost. Right? If Wesley had lost the last 30 moves, nobody would have said anything. But he drew. Because good player. And uh, Fabiano did beat Wesley in the first half of the tournament. So the first round. Okay. And then So Grishuk was a boring draw, if I remember. Oh, yeah. Not only was it a boring draw, this game has been seen before. <laughs> this has been played more than once. This was played in the World Championship match between Anand and Carlsen. This is that Berlin, and the whole game has been seen before. They just keep playing the same line. And they trade all the pieces off. Man, they're good at trading the pieces off. This has actually been seen in many games. This, this, this whole game. This has been seen many times. Not, not too exciting. Then they get to move 30 because they're required to. And then they agree to a draw. And again, unlike Karyakin, Wesley gave up after like six rounds. Okay, now again, I agree with either you win the tournament or you don't. I agree with that. Because for this tournament, not for any other tournament, for this tournament, if you win the tournament, you might become the world champion. If you don't win the tournament, you don't. That's the point of the tournament. So, either you're playing for first place, or why are you playing? And Wesley decided, after round six or so, like, I just want to draw and get out of here. Karyakin, who was in last place after five rounds, is now in first place. Wesley probably figured, I'm not going to get five wins out of my next seven games. And Karyakin's going to get five wins in the next seven games. So Now, obviously, that's crazy, but that's what's happening. So Wesley gave up. He doesn't mind drawing with White. And even though everybody other than me makes fun of Wesley, Wesley's like a big target of jokes on the Internet, mainly because of his religion. He's very religious. He's a little too religious, if you ask me. But I like Wesley, even though I'm atheist, because that's funny. And he's my teammate. And Wesley's a great guy. But they're making fun of his chess play because he's in the last place, next to last. Very suspicious. Somebody has to be, like, if you have an eight-player tournament, somebody comes in eighth. It doesn't mean they're bad. That's just what happened. 
if Kramnik came in eighth, if Aronian comes in eighth, if Caruana comes in eighth, that somebody had to come in eighth. Wesley's not going to come in eighth because Aronian's fixated on that. But uh, Wesley gave up. He's like, I lost the first two games of Black. Then I beat Aroni in a nice game, and as you haven't seen yet, he lost a drawn position. Oh, maybe I did show you that. He lost a drawn position to Karyakin, which I, I think I did show you. I already showed you that last week. Okay, Kar Karawana Zing. Karawana was winning this game. He was really winning this game, and then he didn't win it. Yeah. So this is this is like better for White, and then eventually White was just winning, and then Karawana messed it up. And the winning move was crazy. The way he was winning was crazy. Knight F8, Knight G6. Try to find that position. Carol, didn't he miss several wins in this game? I think he did. Well, he was winning a lot, but... I mean, he went from, like, really winning to a little winning. So, yeah, but I'm trying to think. There was a point where he had this beautiful win. Like, just, just gorgeous. But I can't remember where it was. It was with Knight F8 and Knight D7? Let's see. Which he already did. Let's see. Is this where it was? No, Rook D5 was a good move, I think. It was right around here where he had, like, a plus thousand win that he missed. Of course, I know the answer. I still missed it. Yeah, I mean, those numbers are ridiculous. Okay? Yeah. Actually, yeah, here, definitely Black wants to go here and kick the knight out of g6. So rib d2 is like plus 6 already. But okay. You play king f4, which is really bad. But somewhere here he was winning more, I think. Where was it? I thought there was some huge win he missed. But now I don't see it. Rook e3, rook f3, knight f8. That's not the huge one I'm talking about. He's already messed this up, and then he was winning again. Yeah, he played fine here. Yeah. So, ah, 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 this is, yeah, this is it. Yeah. Okay. So after rook d2, which stops the bishop from coming here, if you play knight e7 to trade the knights, there's knight check... And, and Rook here, which looks good. And what he missed was after this, I think it's, is it E7 or is it Knight? Oh, I know what it is. I apologize. This is the win that he missed. So Caruana saw Rook D2, stopping Bishop C2, Knight E7 to get rid of his Knight. And he saw, he saw this. And he didn't see the winning move here. I don't blame him for not seeing the winning move. I don't blame him at all. Um, it's a computer move. It's just beautiful, though. It's too bad he didn't see it, because he would have done it. But Instead, the move that he made like threw away the win. He wasn't winning anymore. His supercomputers play really well. Obviously, if white moves his knight with discovered check, black plays knight takes rook. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a Novotny theme, which you only see in problems. If you do chess puzzles all day, I don't mean the ones on the internet, I mean real ones, ones that are hard, ones that take hours to solve one puzzle. There's a theme called the Novotny theme, which you never see in a tournament game, and here it is. So that's why he didn't see it. It's when two pieces are doing something, but they're doing something through the same square. So if you put a piece there, you automatically block one of them. So this bishop is stopping the pawn from queening, and so is this rook. Okay, and so if you if you put a piece on d7, that blocks both the pieces, and even if Black takes the piece on d7, he's blocking his other piece. So, for example, takes with a bishop, he's blocking his rook. Takes with a rook, he's blocking his bishop. So the winning move is knight d7 check. Okay, and obviously you can still take the rook, and now you play e7, and the knight blocks both pieces. And you can't stop this and this. You can only stop one. You can stop either one, but not both. Right. Confusing the audience. Although confusing Caruana. And that's it. White wins. 
So he didn't see knight d7 check. I don't blame him. He thought if I move a knight with check, knight takes rook. But knight d7 actually blocks the rook and the bishop, which is amazing. Unless you're a computer, then it's easy. Right, right. Yeah. Right. And that's obviously he didn't see knight d7. He probably got to here and said, oh, well, I'm not winning. But he is winning. Yeah. Okay, then the game ended in a draw where like nothing was happening. It was a boring position. Yeah. And that, that cost him. Yeah. Um, Aronia Mamanjarov, not worth talking about. Okay, this game, uh, Kramnik went insane. Which, if he won, it would have been great, but he lost all his pieces. Yeah. So when you sack and make the guy like he did against Aronia, they're like, wow, you're great. But then here they're like, what are you doing? So they got this position, which is better for white. Black's queen is a little iffy. And Kramnik went insane here. But it seemed pretty reasonable to go insane. And actually, after Kramnik went insane, um, Karyakin didn't play the best way, and Kramnik was back in the game, but he didn't know it. So he played e5, d5, e4. So all the pieces are hanging. Takes, takes, takes. And the computer doesn't take with the rook because the computer sees a thousand moves ahead, but. Taking with the rook is the aggressive way. And now, bishop e2 throws away a lot of his advantage. He should actually take this. Okay? And the variations are totally crazy, but the computer says white wins, white wins, white wins, white wins. Okay? And this looks very safe. Bishop e2, we're going to do this, and we're still threatening this. So, Karyaka must have thought that's easier. I'll just do that. Okay? And Kramnik played rook f2 check, confusing the audience. And then bishop c5 check. So if black had made it white, you would have been, wow, Kramnik's a genius. Uh, but, and then queen f4 check. And then he took this. This is a funny position. Black has two pawns for a rook, but white's king doesn't look very good. Yeah. And Kramnik, who's usually a very boring player, played like this the whole tournament. And then when he won, it was amazing. And when he lost, it was not amazing. But when he won, it was great. So, And unfortunately... Uh, and bishop e6 is a bad move, and white defended really well. So they just played chess with black down a rook. Then he sacrificed more material, but there's no pieces left. So yeah. And then rook, I love rook h3. So white just defends, 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 defends. Eventually black runs out of threats, and black has no pieces left. So white's up a lot of material here. You can't even count that high. He has two rooks for a bishop. And if you start taking things, then black's pieces disappear. So he, like, you could win the exchange, but that's no good. You got a rook. So, yeah, they just played, and he didn't resign for a while. And then he resigned. Yeah. This is like plus 30, I guess. I don't know. Some crazy number. Yeah. So that looked good, but it didn't work. Yeah. Um, too bad for Kramnik. Okay, Grisha Karyakin was a boring draw. Okay, now Kranik went totally insane against Aronian and beat him. Um, the computer's like equal, 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 equal in this insane position. Levon got into time trouble and made the worst move in chess history and then resigned. If he made the right move, it's all equal. When I say equal, that's if two supercomputers are playing. Okay, so I'm going to start with my favorite position. This is my favorite position, Okay. In this position, black played C takes B4, and white played a move I would never think of. I mean, if I was playing a bullet game, I would have already pre-moved A takes B4. Okay, he played queen E1. And the idea is, I want to play rook takes knight on F6, and then play queen G3 check, and then mate you. Because I got my bishop on the diagonal, my knight's on H4, my rook's on F1. That's a pretty good attack, actually. Okay, so Ronian blocked the bishop with d5. So the bishop doesn't have any power over here anymore. Okay, and then of course he sacked the exchange anyway. Eventually. There we go. And he, and the game made no sense. And now white wants to get his queen over here. So black distracts him. And says, no, move your queen the other way. And Kramnik's like, nah, let's go over here. So now that pawn's pretty strong on d2. So again, these games just make no sense. Kramnik's just playing crazy. Okay, now, this was amazing. Played rook f1, stopping the queen. And 
He played rook a7 defending. Knight g6 check. Knight f4 check. Knight h5 threatening queen g7 mate. And now earlier in the game, I was confused by something. Hold on. Yeah, it was this position. What was I confused about? And I remember the answer and I couldn't believe it. I was in shock. Ah, I know what it was. I know exactly what it was. It was here, 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 here. Yeah, this is what I was shocked about. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Dun, 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 dun. I wondered to myself, but I didn't know the answer. I asked the engine. I wondered, why didn't he go here instead of king f8? King f8 is like walking into white's rook and the knight g6 check and the bishop on e6 and the pawn on f7. And I'm like, why not just king h7? What's the problem? And white has no good checks that I saw and black's threatening a queen. But the players and the computers saw the right move here. I was like, wow, I couldn't believe it. I was very impressed with the winning move here. It's funny because I have a saying about this move. It's my saying. I made it up. So I would, I would find it if I was thinking of my sayings, but I wasn't thinking of my sayings. One of my sayings is C4 is explosive, because C4 is explosive. And C4, to play bishop C2 check, and it stops the pawn from queening. Yeah, wow. I was like, oh, that's a good move. Yeah, I like that. I didn't see C4, of course. Yeah. I just thought, like, the bishop's over here, but now we can transfer. And C4, stopping the pawn from queening, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and so the computer says this is all equal. F6 stops mate, because the rook is defending. Now you know why he played rook A7. Okay. Yeah. Now in this position, which is totally nuts, the computer says equal. And it says black has to play rook g7, which stops the discovered checks on the diagonal. And the idea is, if white moves his knight, like let's say knight h5, some attacking move, when black plays rook takes rook check, then he can queen with check. So you got to watch it. Okay, and the computer somehow says this is a draw. I don't know, I don't know why. Like you can play bishop takes bishop, or queen takes bishop. All right. And instead, Aronian lost in one move. The game went one more move. And I understand why he lost. In fact, it reminded me of what Karawana missed a little bit. He played queen c7. He was in time trouble. So he's attacking the piece that's going to discover check him. So if the knight moves with check, black can play queen takes queen. I'm sure that's what he was thinking. And white won in one move. Can you find it? There's two answers. It's the same idea. But Aronian couldn't find it, so don't feel bad. About 98, isn't it? It is 98. Bam. So it's check, and you're attacking the queen. Oh. And if the queen goes to g7, well, you would take this. But yeah. And so queen takes queen, rook takes rook. This is the only legal move, and then mate. Also winning, but not as cute, is knight h5 check. It's the same mate. Because the knight controls g7. But knight e8 is cuter because you attack the queen too. So that's funnier. It's easy to forget that bishop over there. On b3, yeah, yeah. So queen c7 just hangs mate. And otherwise the computer says it's equal. But the position makes no sense, and they're in time trouble. And that's how you win these tournaments. You play good, and sometimes you get lucky. Unfortunately, Kranich didn't get lucky enough. This is like a lucky game, because the computer never said he was winning, and then all of a sudden he wins in one move. Because he made the game complicated, and his opponent couldn't figure it out. And some, when Magnus wins, usually it's not like that. He's like equal, slightly better, clearly better winning. Yeah. Now, Kranich used to win like that all the time. That was the way he won. But now he's 43, you got to win a lot of games. You can't just win a couple. So... That's actually why I'm not, now I'm American, but I don't really care who wins. But you could be like, oh, Caruana was in first place the whole tournament. What a disaster. I mean, Caruana had two wins and nine draws. 
So unless you're going to have like five wins and five draws, your lead's not safe. If you lose one game, you're not in first. So at some point, yeah, Fabi had three wins and eight draws. And at the same time, Mama Jarov had two wins and nine draws. If you want to win the tournament and make sure that you win it, that's not how you do it. Because you lose a couple of games and you're in the middle. You, if you want to make sure you win, you got to win, 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 win. And when Kasparov was world champion, when Karpov was world champion, and sometimes when, Car when Carlson was good, like in 2012, 13, 14, when they won tournaments, it was by two, three, four points. It wasn't because it was close. Now, if Carlson wins this a round robin, it's going to be like by a point or half a point. And so that means the tournament's interesting until the end. When Kasparov was playing, the tournament wasn't interesting. It was just to see who came in second when he was a world champion. Like, oh, Kasparov nine, his opponent's eight and a half. No, it was Kasparov nine, his opponent six. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't close. And I was in Tilburg in 1991 with my mom. And it was a 14, it was this, it was 14 rounds, eight, it was the same format. Eight players, double round robin. It was just a GM turn, it wasn't a candidate. And Kasparov got 12 out of 14. And Korshnoy came in second, eight and a half. Eight and a half's a good score. That's what's going to win this tournament, eight and a half. But 12 out of 14, then is, you don't have to discuss it, right? And with White, Kasparov got seven out of seven. I was there. I, I talked to him about that. I was like, that's pretty good. <clears throat> and he was like, eh. So, yeah. So you can't be like, oh, it's too bad. That, I mean, that's win two games in a whole tournament. You can't be mad you're not winning. Mama Jarrah won two games, and we've played 12 rounds. So you can't really be, like, upset that people aren't winning the tournament when they never beat anybody. All right. Mama Jarrah, Caruana. Um... That was pretty equal throughout. Yeah, there was nobody was ever winning that game. Boring game. Ding so Ding drew his first eleven games, and so is trying to draw his games. Now Ding Grishuk, I don't want to say it's the game of the tournament because there's so many good games this tournament. This was the most amazing game of the tournament for not winning. Everybody commentating said Grishuk will resign now. And he four hours later he drew. Yeah, okay, and wow, Ding just crushed him. Ding played great, and then he didn't. So uh, they got this position, okay? And Black's King is very suspicious, and Black's Rook on eight is also suspicious. And White sacrificed nothing. This is equal material. They have equal material, but we got these pieces over here. That's not good, okay? And... In this position, the computer suggested a move and said Black resigns. And Ding Lorin's move is equally good. Play knight d5, also good. Now to bishop d5, uh, the move that's plus 17 is knight d8. The point of knight d8 is to play queen e8 mate with advantage. Queen takes rook takes mate. You're, just, you're blocking the rook. And then that's mate. So that's good. Yeah, the truth hurts. Well, these these aren't helping out. These aren't stopping the mate. That's they're not. Not yeah. And the computer says plus seventeen. Another idea is to take this, and you can't take my rook because queen e eight mate. So just, just resign here. You have to resign. And actually, the previous move knight d eight was also mate. Knight d eight was also plus seventeen. Okay. In fact, the idea of knight d eight is like I'm threatening mate. Right, you don't want to get mated, right? So maybe you take my rook, I don't knight, and I take back, and I'm threatening mate again. Man, it's harsh. Yeah, the truth hurts. Yeah. So just knight d8 wins. You just mate him. You you, you play mate. So when I asked Ding yeah. after the match, why he didn't see that? Well, what he did was winning. He saw what he did. He played knight f4, which also wins. Now this is why Grish looks good, and we're sitting in a dank room somewhere, getting scared of the lights. Here, Black played the only move to continue playing the game. And then the, the commentators were really impressed. It's the first computer move. Well, I'm threatening 
knight takes and rook takes. And I am completely winning even after the best move. But you got to keep fighting. He played knight c1. And the idea is, if you take this, you're not pinning my bishop on d5 anymore and winning it. If you don't take it, I'll go here. And block it up. So knight c1 was the best move. And... And now, like, white's better. Yeah, like, white's not, like, plus 17, now white's, like, plus 1. And the game went on, and on, and on, and on, and on, and I mean, and on. Like, I ain't kidding. This was the longest game of the tournament in amount, look at that. And it was, a, look at that. And I was amazed because I actually left at this point, I had to go do something. I had to go, I don't know what I was doing. And after knight z8, black resigns. And I came back like three hours later and they were playing a drawn ending and I was really confused. I was like, wait, what? Didn't he play knight z8 and the game ended? And I can prove it by pushing this button. Go knight d8. There we go. Yeah. The computer approves. Yeah. So and I couldn't believe hours later this game was still being played because, you know, it was 27, 50, 60. Yeah. yeah. Just didn't see it, I guess. And what he did was fine, but not as winning, and then the game went on and on and on. And eventually they drew. Bam! This is a funny end of the game, because, yeah. He takes the rook, gives him a check, yeah, here, and he sees that if he goes here, this happened. You attack the pawn, and then, whoops, and then you fork. Yeah, and both players see that, so... So he didn't let him do that, and he played king f6, and then he let him do it, yeah. And it's funny because when it's not a side pawn, when it's, you know, knight pawn, that's always a draw. You always have some tricks to draw. Yeah. So that game took seven hours to finish, and Dinglerin should have won in three hours, and he drew in seven hours. And that was his 11th consecutive draw, if you can believe that. Now, you, you know the chess world. Who are they comparing him to when he draws 11 in a row? Geary? Yeah, they're calling him like Ding, Ding Geary instead of Ding Lorin. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, then we had a very yeah, boring he, he draw. Is, he usually is a very exciting player. He had exciting games. He was winning and losing. Yeah. Okay, so we had a boring draw. Now, this was interesting, but just for the opening. The Caruana Kramnik game. They played a note boom, which I think Kramnik has never played with black. And white played the most aggressive move. Okay. Now this is a gambit. The gambit's bishop b4 check. Queen takes d4. And usually bishop e2. Not always, but usually. Sometimes knight e2. Now black's up a pawn, but you know white's going to play queen d6 and so forth. One of the variations which you will approve of, you, is knight a6, bishop f8. If you take a queen d8 mate, you're threatening here. Yeah. Okay. That's a common line. Yeah. Okay. So that's there's tons of theory, very sharp, very complicated. Instead of bishop b4 check, Kramnik played a novelty here that he must have been prepared that's never been played by anybody ever. C5. Very strange move because the knight's on it. Then they both thought forever. I mean, Caruana never moved the rest of the game. He got a time trouble now. He's trying to figure out like what's going on. Yeah. Computer says it's okay. And obviously Kramnik had everything prepared. He looked at it forever. And Caruana never saw that move. So it's a very strange move. So he took with the knight. And then knight c6 attacks the d-pawn. And then he took it. And they just traded everything. And white slightly better. And it was always pretty drawish. The position. Yeah. But the computer likes white. But not winning, just it prefers white. Okay, and they drew some boring game. It took a long time. Okay, Roni and Karyakin was funny. The computer's like equal, 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 and Aronian's trying to win and tried too hard. And then he got a bad position and lost. And they got a funny position, which I've lectured about before. Not the position, but the idea. Okay, I talk about this all the time in my classes. Is that D pawn weak or is it going to queen? And the answer is the players don't know either. Like, well, I hope I queen it. I hope I take it. And so black won the game, so you know what happened. But, I mean, that pawn, that looked, looks pretty good. Sixth rank, defended twice, right? This pawn doesn't, this pawn doesn't seem so dangerous. 
I'm attacking that pawn, right? So it seems good for white to me. Black played f6, threatening e5, which wins a piece. So white has to move out of there, and then he defends his pawn and takes the b and takes the other pawn. So that pawn's not dangerous at all, the d pawn. Yeah. And after playing for a million moves, black eventually got a big advantage because black c pawn is better than white's d pawn. That pawn's not going anywhere. Yeah. And he won a million moves again. Yeah, this game never ended. Very patient. And black was a pawn up, and then he won. Now he's at 500 pawns. And white gets the prize for not resigning. And he resigned here. Because if king here, I trade queens. Then he's like, all right, trade queens, I resign. Yeah. No stalemate, he traded queens. Otherwise, stalemate tricks. For example, here. Was that what Aronian was going for? Probably. For yeah, probably. That still doesn't work because queen takes. He's still losing here. There's no stalemate here. Queen h3, I take with the queen. Queen g4, I take with the queen. Man, I tried to steal my trick and it wouldn't work. Darn. Yeah, yeah well, he's trying, but it's silly. Yeah, yeah it's not Aronian's tournament. Yeah, and Aronian drew Grishuk. That was very boring. Okay, and this is, the, this is what happened yesterday with Karyaka beating Caruana. They had the most boring opening ever, and then Karyaka did something that I talk about every stream. I stream on Twitch, as you know, and I have rules for my stream. They don't make any sense. They're my rules. Now, I'm sure you've heard of Barry Crane. When I say I'm sure you've heard of him, you probably haven't. Barry Crane is the most famous bridge player of all time. And he had the most master points when he was murdered. Uh, and he was the producer of Mission Impossible and other television shows. And his son, Ben Crane, is 2200 USCF. So in Michigan, he's from Michigan, all these people. If you play bridge or chess and you're my age or older, you know Ben Crane, Barry Crane, etc. Barry Crane's murder hasn't been solved. And he was murdered 30 years ago in, in, in Studio City, California. They haven't solved it. Um, I think I know what happened, but I can't talk about it on camera. <clears throat> anyway, because this is a G-rated show. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so what I mentioned those guys, Ben, ben Crane, Barry Crane. I forgot what I it had to do with this game. But I forgot why. Ah, okay. I have rules in my stream on Twitch. Okay, one of my rules is you must sacrifice the exchange. So whenever I can legally sacrifice the exchange, I do. I don't care if it's good. I do it, but that's a rule. And the reason I'm mentioning that is Barry Crane had bridge rules. If you played with him, you had to follow his rules. Now, some of the rules were fine, and some of them are just nonsense, but you have to do it anyway. If he didn't do it, he wouldn't play with you. And he had rules, and they're not, they don't help you. It's just, he's crazy. So sort of like, always sacrifice the exchange, that's stupid, but that's my rule, so you gotta do it on my stream. Well, only I have to do it, because I'm playing people, so only I have to do it. But I do it, and instead of saying, like, why'd you do that? Because you have to. I can't give you a chess reason, that's, I have to sack the exchange. Okay? And I always win those games, and I show that I'm right. Barry Crane had a few rules. One was you couldn't eat between sessions. So you played three and a half hours of bridge, there's a two hour break, which is for eating, and then you, you can't eat, not allowed to. Get to play hungry. That's what he said. Another one of his rules was, if you're missing a queen and you're trying to figure out which opponent has it, if it's clubs or diamonds, you play that guy. If it's hearts or spades, you play that guy. Always. Even if it was mathematically wrong to do that, you did. That's, that was his rule. Okay? Like what? Anyway, he was the greatest bridge player ever. And he's insane. So, yeah. I mean, he was weird and I can't tell you why. So that's like, when the camera's off, I can tell you. So anyway, uh, so in this game, Karyakin followed my rule. The computer's like, what are you doing? And the GMs on the internet are like, oh, great, beautiful. What a great player. The computers are like, who's this guy? This is funny, by following my rule, all the GMs in the world praised him while he was doing it, and the computers are like, that's no good. And then he won easily. So my rules aren't so stupid, they're just a little stupid. Okay, so we'll get to the point I'm talking about, which is here. Okay, pretty boring. White's better, but that's too hard for me to explain to the class. It looks really, really boring. Okay. 
Black played bishop g4, and white followed my rule. How does white sacrifice the exchange here? How would you do it? Take the pawn and the bishop. Exactly what he did. Yeah. And the computer's like, this is nothing for white. And the GM's like, they're like, wow, this is great for white. Okay? Because that bishop on d5 is better than either one of black's rooks, and white's a pawn up. That bishop's on d5 forever. Okay, so that's, it's, why, for why a human, it's no fun. Why didn't a computer see that? No, it does. It just doesn't care. The computer's like, whatever, I just defend. See, a human can't defend this with black. A computer can. Computer just plays perfectly, and then white doesn't win. But in humans play, white just wins. So the humans were like, wow, I like white. And the computers were like, ah, nothing. And the computer, the, the humans who were strong grandmasters, they were like, yeah, but I'll take white anyway. Because the computer says, I'm taking white. And then he just tore him up. Very hard to play black, because black has no plan. Black just sits around and waits to lose. Which a computer can do. A computer can sit around good and stop your threats. But I mean, the rooks just do nothing for black. Yeah, also, people on the internet were accusing Karyakin of cheating, because they're stupid. And, they're, and this was the main reason he played king a2 here. That's the computer move. He said, no human would play that. And I was thinking, man, I would play that. Wow, the king on a2, that's the safest king ever. On the back rank, it's getting checked. Here, it's never going to get checked. Nope. It's just much better on a2. But for a weak player, that move doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, king a2, what about what's going on in the game? And I'm like, well, the king's better on a2. Okay. And then black just couldn't do anything the whole game. And white was, white was very patient. And eventually, white took all of black's pawns. It was unfortunate for Caruana. Look at that move. Now that's a discovered attack and a half. Attacking the rook with the rook and the queen and the, and the queen. Notice it's move 39. That means the time control is at move 40 and he didn't see that. Black didn't see it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and then he's like, where do all my pawns go? I used to have pawns, now I don't. Yeah. And here he resigned. You'll be surprised what the computer says. It gives numbers you've never seen before. If you could get a settlement for this number, you'd be doing well. Yeah. Give it a second. And it sort of likes white. A bit. Yeah, it's only a two CPUs. It gets to like 50 if you let it sit for a while, four CPUs. It doesn't like black. Yeah. Well, black can't do anything. White just walks his king up. Right. And you can't go that way because b6 and you queen. Now, I saw this yeah. earlier today, this position. Mm -hmm. Is there some reason why the rook can't just go up and down that? Uh -huh. You can. And my king goes over there. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to go here. The... Uh, you, you, nothing you can do about it. I'm going to do it. And your rook's going to stay here, stopping me from playing g7. And I'm going to go here. Yeah. In fact, look at the computer. King c3, king d3, king e3. <clears throat> you just walk over there. You can't keep your rook on the fifth rank to stop my king as I play g7. This is the only good square for your rook. It stops my king from going up, and it stops that. Once my king goes here, you can stop one, but not both. You can stop my king from moving up, or you can stop my pawn from playing g7, but you can't stop them both. If your rook goes to the g file, my king goes up, and then I play g7. And the only way to do it is with your king, and then g b6, and I queen. So you can't play that. So you can't do, can't do anything. I'm convinced if it has a lot of cores, it would announce mate here. I think it's like mate in 35 or so. But my computer can't do it. My computer's no good. Now, you were here last week, and we were talking to Raj about some position. He went, he put it on his computer in his work. It announced like mate. In, in the Wesley So game, where he beat Aronian, and it was queen in three versus rook bishop in one, it announced mate really early. Like he was like mate in 32. Like way before the game ended. Yeah.
if you have a good computer with a lot of cores and a lot of hardware, fast, you could it'll announce made in 30. Yeah, especially in end games where there's no pieces. Middle games, there's a thousand legal moves that won't do that. But in an end game where both sides have like seven legal moves, it'll see 30 moves ahead. Yeah, yeah there's no legal moves here. So the, so a good comp like right now the computer's at depth 33. If I put it on four CPUs, it'll get to some crazy numbers. Right? Plus 15 means it knows it's going to queen. It's already seen it's going to queen. But if I had like two CPUs, is ridiculous compared to what they have now. It still could beat the heck out of me. But yeah. Like the one on the internet, SAS is like 24 or 30, it's like 12 times faster than this. So. Yeah. So that was an amazing game because the exchange sack, everybody liked it. Well, the car wanted didn't like it. That was yesterday. And then Jane just beat Mama Jarov. He just was like equal, slightly better, clearly better, and then won. So I was like, great. And actually it was a textbook. This is a textbook win for Black. The only way Black can win this, other than white blundering, is Black gets a pass pawn on the queen side. He's got two to one. And you're like, well, that'll never happen. And then it happened. He just pushes queen side pawns. So we go a few moves later, he's got his pawn on b5. We go a few moves later, pawns on a5 and b5. Then he plays a4. Then we go a few moves later, plays b4. Then we go a few moves later, plays b3. So every few moves. Then we go to the next one, he plays a3. That pawn's getting strong. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to stop it? How do, you, how do you stop that pawn? You can't play rook a5, you can't play queen a7. So he played b4, so his bishop stops it. And then he goes here. How are you going to stop it now? You just lost. If you play bishop a2, I play queen b4, threatening queen b2 check, queen d2 check, queen b4 check. That pawn's a monster on a3. Yeah. So he just didn't stop it. And then he played a2, and then he queened. There you go. And he got, he got a bishop for his queen. Yay! And then he played a check, but the queen can block. He's got too many queens. That's unfortunate. Delete previous version of Windows? No! What? what does that even mean? Yeah. So, you can't play Rook H5 check because it's illegal. You see how it's pinned? Yeah. So you play Queen H4 check. Yeah. He played Rook H5, but Black's like, I got a lot of Queens. <laughs> queen A7 check. He's going to take the Bishop after Rook, and then, he's, and then he's up a Rook. Yeah. He's got too many Queens. <clears throat> so White resigned. Some crazy number, I assume. Yeah, there we go. There's a crazy number. Yeah. But that's amazing. Every five moves, A5, and then I resign. Yeah. And it reminds me, in the 1978 or 81 World Championship, I think 81. Pretty sure it was 81. Actually, no, I think it was 78. It was game 32. I think it was 78. In game 32 of the karpov Korshner match, it was 5-5. Five to five. It was 5-2. to two. And Korshner won three games out of four with a draw at the end. So it's 5-5. Five, five. Next person who wins, wins. And Korshner played the Pierce with Black. It was getting squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. And eventually Karpov had a pass pawn on the queen side. And it was pushing it up. And then they, they adjourned. And it was they adjourned then. And the pawn was like on A5 or A6. And Korshner didn't. Pawn was too strong. Yeah. Yeah. Pawn was going to cost him a piece. Yeah. But usually in a super GM level... You know, you don't just see, like, this march down the board and I resign because they know that's going to happen and they don't want to happen. That's why it was a great game because that was, like, Black's only plan and he implemented it, I guess, starting on move 20. It's like, okay, B5. And then on move 39, Queen. So it took him 19 moves to push both of his pawns down the board while White was pushing in the center and then White Black had a Queen. Now, that's because Mama Jarov knows he has to win and he's going to let you do stuff while he's doing stuff instead of playing for the draw. Like, I won't let him do that, and I won't do anything. It'll be a draw. We're both going to do stuff, and he crashed through. Look at Marmon Jarov. Looks good, right? Look at him crashing through. Like, he crashed through, but he's not a queen. So. <clears throat> and if the rook wasn't pinned, probably he's okay. But technical details. <clears throat> and also, this point in the game where he's crashing through, they're obviously in time trouble. Like, am I going to play D5, D, E, take and win, or is he going to queen? He's like, I don't know. I have no time on my clock. Yeah. 
So before this happened, I think White had to take measures against this, and he didn't do it. You have a question? No. Nope. I do. Yeah. So Ding was winning a lot of games and finally won one. And he was losing to Car one and he, he drew, so that's fair. Yeah. And that was all yesterday. They have a rest day today. Everybody at home knows what happened, although we don't. And because uh, this will be shown, you know, in a month. So they'll say, oh, yeah, that guy already won. But we don't know what's going to happen. We're confused here. We don't know who's going to win. I'm guessing Karyakin. And you're, you're red, white, and blue, right? I would like to see Carolina win. Yeah. But who do you think is going to win, not who do you want to see win? Man, Karyakin's on a roll. Yeah, he's playing really well now. Yeah. No, I don't want to see Karyakin play again because I don't want to see him play again. I, want to, I don't want to see anybody play again. I want to see a different person every time. But if Karyakin wins, then he played the best. That's right. Wouldn't that be amazing if Karyakin wins this and beats Carlson? Because he was minus two after five rounds. That seems very unlikely he'd win and then beat Carlson. So that's the most unlikely thing could happen. But like you said, he kept playing for the win. That's right. He played, and, and when he was white, he was trying to win. And Wesley, Wesley. he was not trying to win. Yeah. All right. Uh, what did I do wrong? There we go. Save. I mean, Karakin gave Carlson all he could handle the last time, you know, two years ago. That's right. A year ago. Maybe two years. A year and a year and a half. Yeah. <coughs> All right, we're done.